Bonsoir mesdames et messieurs, je m'appelle David Shaw et je suis le vice président senior exchange de l'international et du contenu pour l'UFC. Nous sommes extrêmement fiers d'avoir enfin organisé notre tout premier événement en France. Au nom de Dana, Lawrence, Mark Ratner et toute l'équipe de l'UFC, je voudrais exprimer notre reconnaissance et notre gratitude aux personnes suivantes. Tout d'abord, Madame la ministre de Sport et la Fédération, Fédération, Fédération française de boxe présidée par M. Dominique Neto. Nos autres de la Arena et nos partenaires audiovisuels historiques RMC Sport et l'équipe. L'ensemble de l'équipe de la Fédération internationale de MMA et en particulier Bertrand Amoussou qui est engagé depuis plus de 15 ans pour développer le MMA en France. Et bien évidemment, vous tous, les médias qui couraient l'organisation et ce premier événement UFC en France depuis de nombreux mois. Il nous a fallu de nombreuses années de, de, de dur travail pour développer notre sport et être là ce soir et nous sommes très enthousiastes à l'aider de revenir en France dans le futur. So I wanted to say a few words of thanks to a few key people who uh, made this event possible um, after many, many years of work towards the legalization and structuration of France, of uh, MMA in France. Uh, the Minister of Sport and the, the French Boxing Federation, Monsieur uh, Dominic Neto, the uh, Accor Arena and uh, our partners at uh, MC Sport and L'Equipe, um, the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation and especially Bertrand Amoussou who for over 15 years has been working towards the development of MMA in France. Um, and lastly, all of you who have helped um, really make the support and the promotion and the uh, welcoming of the UFC in France uh, such a special occasion and such a strong week for the sport of MMA here in, uh, in Paris. Uh, tonight we broke the, um, the Arena Live event record with a gate of 3,420,422 euros. 24th straight sellout for the UFC at 15,405. The fight of the night goes to Cyril and Ty, and the performance bonuses go to Benoit Saint Denis and uh, Mega Medoff. With that, I'll open the floor to questions. Um, en anglais, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> uh, you know, with with the, the numbers that you've just mentioned there, is it, you know, how, how impressive is that considering that MMA was you know, not legal here two years ago. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think we're very, very grateful for the, the turnout. Um, we've seen, you know, the first time in New York, the first time in Toronto, the first time in Perth and in Melbourne, when you've got some pent up demand after a significant period of time of not being able to host MMA events. Um, there's certainly a surge in interest and there's an interest from a community that extends well beyond just the MMA community. And I think we saw that tonight. Uh, we really view this week and this weekend as sort of a springboard to the accelerated growth of mixed martial arts in, in France and hopefully after that main event, you know, it's not going to be too long before we're back. Yeah, with that, that being said, you know, London is somewhere that you go, you know, regularly every year. Do you think Paris can be the same? Absolutely, yeah. I think we've been actually pretty vocal about wanting to get to France uh, at least once a year. Not only in the preparation and as we've met with a number of different constituents, different bodies um, here in, in France. Um, but even this week, you heard Lawrence talking about us making France a destination annually. David, over here. Um, yes, sir. Uh, just the, uh, the success of tonight, coupled with two big shows in London this year. I mean, what does that say about the strength of the European market right now? And how likely are we to see additional countries uh, in 2023? Uh, very likely. I mean, I think the plan for 2023 is to try to get back to pre-COVID levels in terms of the number of international events we're having. So we'll get back to Abu Dhabi, um, obviously, well, we're going to be there in a couple months. Um, but we'll be there in 23, London, France. Uh, we need to get back to Scandinavia. We've been talking about going to Germany, um, even Spain. There's a number of different countries we want to get to. So, you know, we're, we're going to be maxed out by the 42 total events. And I think, as you guys know, they're divided up in fairly, you know, straightforward ways as we've done in the past with Brazil and Australia and um, Canada and, and obviously the events that we're having in the US. So um, our goal is to you know try to get to at least one new country next year, at least one that we haven't been to in three or four years since COVID. Um, but we're still in those in those planned development stages at the moment. And just the fan reaction tonight, I mean I yeah, that cool. might have been the loudest 
venue that I've been in. Um, what was it for you? Um, yeah, I'm much of the same. It's always nice to see the different cultural um, elements of a live fan base, and whether it was the national anthem or the, you know, if you're not jumping up and down, you're not French, um, and all the, the other activities that were going on in the fan base in the uh, in the in the seats. Um, yeah, it was incredible. It was it was it was wild. And Lawrence and I were, were texting with Dana and um, and Mick, and you know he could tell on on air that it was it was just mental in here. Last one for me. We talked about the European countries. We also haven't been to Canada since 2019. I'm just wondering if there's anything on the horizon there. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to get to Canada as soon as as we can. Um, so, you know, Toronto's typically a pay-per-view market, as is Edmonton, maybe Calgary. Um, pay-per-views are hard to come by, and then you try to line those up with availabilities, dates at the arenas that um, we need to get to across Canada. Um, we're hoping to get back to Canada three times, as I mentioned, to get to sort of pre-COVID event levels um, or event sort of allocation between the different regions around the world. So, need to get back there very soon. Thank you. You're welcome. When you obviously like today, there's a bit of smash hit, and the whole week's been great. You guys have had an amazing media turnout um, for a new market. But I'm curious, how much pressure is on you to actually have an event go like this? Right, you want your first one to be an amazing show that you can springboard into the next one, and so on and so forth. So when you have a night like this with a main event like that, and you can all sit here and think, okay, the job's done. How important is it to actually have an event go off like this? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's better than the alternative. It's better than if the the card was a bit lackluster. Um, but you know, Dana, Sean, Mick, Hunter always put together compelling cards. Once those cards are set, you know, the fights need to be left to themselves. Um, I think what we can do within our control is to create a very comprehensive um, and compelling impact in the market, right? And so having the fan experience, getting back to do open workouts. Um, Lawrence did sort of a, a breakfast with uh, a government sort of commercial community uh, at the French American Foundation on, on Friday morning. We did an increased number of, of sort of fighter activation. So for us, being here for the first time and making an impact on the community, especially for people who just aren't, you know, they're not aware, they're not exposed to UFC that often. And if they can get, you know, to the, the weigh-ins were full with 3,000, 3,500 people that were here. Um, that's what we can control, and I think the impact we made. The other thing that I think was important was, because we were in France, we were able to have, um, you know, the the fights post 10.30 appear on free air, which is huge. So I'm not sure how it looked on the broadcast, but the intention was to have a bit of a soft reset and for the broadcasters to essentially say, you know, we're now live across the country with the first MMA event or first UFC event in France, um, and that was the Nasserdine fight, so it was a pretty good kickoff to, you know, for the entire country to be able to watch UFC no matter, you know, what kind of, you know, streaming service or, uh, pay TV service or free air channel you had. Uh, Dave, do you have the official translation to US dollars for the game? Uh, well, I mean, these days it's about one to one. So I don't have it in front of me, no. but it's pretty. It's pretty close. Oh, I thought I'd missed it. I was just baffled by your. I mean, mesmerized by your, uh, your friend. Yeah, right. All right. I think everyone was. Swedish television here. Hi, over here. Hello. You yourself mentioned Scandinavia, uh, going back to Scandinavia. Now, uh, more in more specific, Sweden. Any uh, plans for 223? Or th there's also been some rumors about the end of uh, 222 and uh, November, December. Yeah. So nothing to confirm at the moment. We've been looking. You know, last time we were at Royal Arena in Copenhagen, it was incredible. We've been to Stockholm multiple times with, you know, not only a stadium event but a couple um, arena events. We're hopeful to get back there. Unfortunately, nothing to uh, nothing to share at the moment. Um, but on on the docket for 2023. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so um, today we had a Dutch fighter, Jano Ernst, and he was the first Dutchman that has been signed since 2017. And uh, a lot of people are wondering if there's any plans of coming back to the Netherlands or signing more Dutchies because we're running low, right? Running low. Um, yeah, so I and I, I apologize that they were that in Amsterdam or that the Netherlands was left off the list. We've been looking at Rotterdam and Amsterdam for a bit as well, um, and you know we, we've got um, an incredible new partnership with Discovery. Um, they've been huge supporters of ours and have invested heavily in the sport. And so, for us to have our sport showcased in, in such a um, 
you know, meaningful and thoughtful way. The, their approach has been excellent, and we're very happy with the relationship. Um, so yeah, not much I can say on, on the event, and uh, when it comes to fighter development, you know, Sean and Mick are, are working um, you know, tirelessly to try to find new athletes. I don't know what they've got, quite honestly, I don't know what they've got on the horizon, but um, you know, we can ask them next time. Okay. So, sorry. Yeah, we'll do one more. Um, you had uh, two Italian fighters competing on the main card. I guess uh, you know part of the audience was the Italian fans cheering them up. Um, and you mentioned uh, that the UFC is exploring new territories. Is Italy perhaps included in those new territories that are being considered? Yeah, absolutely. The challenge with us is finding an appropriate venue. Um, and um, w you know we, we haven't really gone. We haven't really determined where that would be at the moment, but we, we, we'd love to, honestly, we'd love to. Um, especially when you consider, you know, there was, it seemed like there were two groups of Italians, one on one end, one on the other still, end, and yeah. they were sort of doing sort of call and answer chants, uh, and that was that was pretty impressive. Um, so we'd love to, there's a lot of fans of Italy in our, our company. Okay, thank you very much. Okay guys, I can't thank you enough, this is a pretty special week for the UFC, and um, we couldn't have made an impact like we have without the support and hard work from you guys, so we really appreciate it. Have a good night, safe travels.